Welcome to another message from the Gospel of Luke. We're studying the Gospel of Luke from the Greek text. I hope it doesn't throw you too much of a curve. I'm, I teach a little Greek by induction. Painlessly, I hope. It's a lot more painless than going through all the grammars and memorizing all that stuff and finally get into the God's Word. So I take you and I teach you Greek reading and research by induction. That's a painless way. We're talking about the Jews who had said that they were God's children and the sons of Abraham. And we're in 22, Luke 22 and verse 7. But before we go there, I want to go someplace else. The last message I preached, just before this one, 12, 1 through 6, or 22, 1 through 6, that is, in the Gospel of Luke, we talked about that dastardly, terrible deed. Now I want to read something to you in the 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews. It tells us that we're supposed to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And that was prophesied in Psalm 69, verse 7 and 19, and Psalm 68, 18. For consider him who has endured such hostility, and we're going to talk about that hostility for the next few chapters, by sinners against himself, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood in your striving against sin. Sin is our mortal enemy. It is. Sin is our mortal enemy. Sin is not your friend. You may enjoy sin, but it is not your friend. It is your enemy. The Pope Francis uh, the Holy Papa has just conceived an idea to bring us back more con closely to the uh, Word of God, he says. But when one word he says one thing, with well, actions is much louder than words. He's changing the Lord's Prayer. Now the Lord's Prayer, what it says is, lead us not in temptation, but in the Greek it says, don't let us be carried off into temptation. Please do not let us be carried off into temptation. We're carried off into temptation by our own lust and our own heart, the Adamic nature that we have. This Adamic nature in a different way affects different people. What sin may affect me may not affect you at all. What sin may affect you and these people, I, I, it doesn't bother me at all. But we all have those temptations. Now, as I said about the Pope, don't let us be carried away in sin, in temptation. That's what we pray to the Lord. That's what Jesus said to do. But then what does he say? Do penance. Say so many Hail Marys. Go to the priest and confess your sins. That's not in the Word of God. The seven sacraments, baptism, the Eucharist, marriage as a sacrament. These aren't vehicles of grace. Jesus Christ, blood in Him alone is the vehicle of grace whereby we are saved. Now, we get on down to chastening. Now this dastardly terrible deed that Israel committed and Judas committed were by bastards. Let's see what the Bible says about that. These people were illegitimate children of God. They were not God's children. They said they were, but they weren't. And have you forgotten the exhortation which is addressed to you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord. In Job 5.17. Nor faint when you are reproved by him. Have, uh, 
for those whom the Lord loves, He disciplines. And He scourges every son whom He receives. Proverbs 3.12, Psalm 119.75 For it is the discipline that you endure. God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. You are bastards. You're illegitimate. Now let's go back and see what Jesus was putting up with for us. Now when we're disciplined, if we're doing wrong by the Lord, we ought to say praise the Lord for it because we are His children. Because by discipline we know that we are His. If we are without discipline, we are not the Lord's. I've seen people in my life. I know one woman, she knew the Bible very well as far as her safety belt. She went around sinning, sinning, sinning. Everything that she did was sin. Dishonesty, corruption, adultery. Everything. The whole life of it. And she'd say, once saved, always saved. If ye are without chastisement, ye are illegitimate, ye are bastards. Let's look. Be thankful when we are disciplined of the Lord. Now we're going to go back. We're talking about the three Sabbaths during the time that Jesus was crucified in that week. El Thane Day Hey Hamera. Tone oxymon en he dex ede the este to pasca. And it became or came to pass the day of the unleavened bread during which it is bindingly necessary to kill the Passover lamb, the Paschal lamb. When they did this, the Passover lamb, they believed that they were forgiven of their sins. When God forgives us for our sins, we ought to rejoice. Some people rejoice with great laughter and other people rejoice with tears. People at weddings, some of them are laughing and smiling and others are crying. When some people come to the Lord as their Savior, Jesus Christ, they just want to jump up and they shout, Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord! And others cry. Thanking God for the forgiveness. Instead of separation and consecration to God, these bastards, so to speak, illegitimate priests, so-called administrator of God's kingdom were rejoicing and scheming to kill the very Son of God. 12 and verse 8 now. Kai apestalen petron kai ewanen ipon poruthentes hetoi masete himen to pasca hina fa gomen And he sent, now this word is apestolo, he sent with authority. That's what the word apostle means, and this is a verb that it comes from. First Aris and Dignity back to third person singing. And he sent Peter and John. Peter and John as a unit. Having said, having gone, you prepare for us the Pascha in order that we may eat. If I go, that we may eat. 2 and 22 and verse 9. Hoi de epon auto pu thales etoi masomen. And the ones they said to him, Where? Where do you wish that we may prepare this feast? Then Jesus answers them, Ho de pen autois adu, acel thonton. Himon es tain polim sinon tisen 
Hemen Anthropos, Keromion, Hidatos, Bastazo, Akula Lethesate, Alto Ace Tain Hoikion, Ace Ain, Ace Poru Ethe. And the one he said to them, You behold, having entered into of ye into the city, the Poline, ye sh he shall meet you, the man. The pitcher or the pot of water bearing and carrying. Now this is unusual because man doesn't usually carry water. Women carry water. Women do all of the hard work, the, the wood gathering and, and the, the, the washing and the cooking and the carrying of the water, which is, that's a heavy task. Now this man is carrying a pot of water. It's going to be easy to see him from all the rest because this is unusual. This is woman's work. Women, sorry about that, but that's the way it was in the Bible time. You follow after him into the house into which he enters into. 22 verse 11, Kai arete tu oiko des pete. Teis oikios lege tui ho didaskalos pu estento kata lima. Hopu to pasca meta ton, mate ton mu fago. <coughs> and you shall say to the housemaster, the oiko despote, the housemaster. The housemaster of the house. And he says to you, the teacher, where it is the guest room. The place to lay down the guest room. Where the Passover with the one's disciples of me, I shall eat, or I may eat. First person singing their first air is subjunctive active from STO, by the way. I'll go. 22 verse 12. Kakenos, Heman, Dexe, Anagoi, On, Mega, Astro menon, a k, het toy masete. And that one to you, he shall point out an upper room, ana goyon. An upper room, large, great, mega. Astro menon, having been furnished. Accusative singular neuter, perfect participle passive voice, having been prepared. There. Ye may prepare. 20 through 13. Apelo, apelthontes, de huron, kathos, ereke, autois kai, etoi mason, to pasca. And having gone, they found just as he had said to them, and they prepared the Passover. Pasca. They prepared the Passover. And now we go to the institution of the Lord's Supper after the Passover feast. They had the Passover feast and they have everybody's plate set there. Everybody has a plate. Now they're not setting up the table in chairs. They're laying up the table as a short table. They're laying up on cushions up to the table. This is a very large room, remember. Now the disciples are there, and Judas is there at the Passover dinner, supper. Now remember, they're supposed to go to that supper. They're supposed to have their staffs with them. They're supposed to have their shoe, their feet shod. In other words, shoes, foot, shoes on their feet because they're going to leave. This dinner, remembering the time that God took Israel out of Egypt. Judas Issachar was there. He was there. What's happening with all these other people? When they're, when they're supposed to be preparing for their Passover, what they're doing is preparing to murder our Lord and Savior. He took this Passover just a little bit early with his disciples or he wouldn't have taken it at all. Now, 
they are out trying to figure out how to murder him with Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot right now is at the table with Jesus. And he's going to leave. And he's going to go to his strange bedfellows, the bastards, the illegitimate children of God, along with him. You know, if you sleep with a skunk, you're going to smell like one. Judas slept with the skunks. Kai hote eganato ha hora ana pesen kai hoi apasloi sin alto. And when it became the hour, he laid up to eat, and the one's apostles with him. 1 Corinthians 11, 23-34, Mark 14, 22-26, Luke 22, or, four, or Luke 22, 14-20, and Matthew 26, 26-30 are all cross-references to this. Even John has got one of these, even though John was not part of the synoptics. And the word synoptic means to see together. They didn't look at Jesus. There were three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that looked together. But John looked a different way. He looked to show us the very Jehovah God of the Old Testament that became flesh and dwelt among us. But he put this one down because here's God at this supper portraying his death and burial and resurrection. Now, there were plates and cups for everybody. But there was one cup and plate set for Elijah with a piece of bread for him. And they would ask Elijah to come. Now Jesus had already told to us that Elijah was John the Baptist. But now, at, after this sup is over, remember, after the Passover is over, he institutes the Lord's Supper. Now Judas is gone. He's gone. He leaves. They suppose he's gone to get something else because he's got the money bag. He takes a money bag with him. And he gets more money to put in it. 30 more pieces of silver from those other illegitimate sons. Those other bastard children that said they were God's leaders and administrators. Kaya pain prosatus epithemia epithemase Tuto, to, pasca, fagain, meth, himon, pro, tu, me, pasain. And he said toward them, With much desire I desire this, the Passover, to eat with you all, before I am to suffer. Before to suffer. Pasain. Before to suffer. Lego garhimen hote. Ukete ume fago auto eos hoto play rothe in te basilia to theu. Now, every time they finished the Passover dinner, they would take their cups and they would say, Next year in Jerusalem, Jesus takes the uh, Passover dinner, supper, and he takes it away from the families of Israel. Each individual family, the father was ahead of that supper. And portrayed and remembered the reason why they're taking the supper because God rescued them out of Egypt. Here, God rescued us out of sin and the lives that we lived before. He has rescued us. Now he takes that Passover dinner and it's nullified from now on and he institutes the Lord's Supper in his ecclesia in his church and the church was there. The church baptized before the day of Pentecost. The church was called out before the day of Pentecost. The church had the treasure before the day of Pentecost. The church had apostles placed in it, the first gift placed in the church before the day of Pentecost. So the church is here. And in this church he's going to institute the Lord's Supper. For I say to you that no lot, no longer, no not, I may eat it. What? The Supper. 
until of which it may be filled in the kingdom of the God. The end of each Passover, they would say next year in Jerusalem. He doesn't say next year in Jerusalem. He's not going to be there next year. But from now on, they are going to march throughout the world and be driven as animals by predators. Kai dex almanos poterion eucharist tesos e pen labete tuto kai dia marest hate eis hiatos. And having taken Elijah's cup, their cups have all been empty. They're, they're, the dinner's over now. Now, they take, he takes Elijah's cup and Elijah's bread. And with Elijah, see, Elijah's come now. There's no more need for Elijah. He's already come and gone. And having taken the cup of our redemption, and having given thanks, the Eucharistios sauce. Now Jesus Christ is not on the cross of Calvary today, as the Catholics say. He is in heaven. One time, hapox, once and for all, he died on the cross of Calvary. In the book of Revelation, it talks about the age of Thyatira. That's when the Catholic Church instituted the Transubstantiation, the doctrine of transubstantiation. That's where they changed the wafer into the body of Jesus and the cup into the blood by some miraculous way. Jesus is not on the cross. Jesus is in heaven. Jesus died for you, Hapox, once and for all, but never more. He is not on that cross. He's not in that wafer. He's not in that cup. Now, there are three forms of the Lord's Supper, transubstantiation, consubstantiation, and memorial. Transubstantiation was instituted by the Catholic Church here in the 1100s. Martin Luther and John Calvin came out of the Catholic Church as priests. Luther was an ordained Catholic priest. John Calvin was not, but he did pastor Dominican churches. And both of them tried to reform the Catholic Church. Now, Martin Luther came out he, because he read Romans. He believed he was saved by grace and he, and he had an experience of grace. But he didn't leave the church far because he still kept the idea the church and state were one. And he still persecuted other Christians that didn't agree with him. And he established his Lutheran church. John Calvin came out of the Catholic Church, yes. He kept on preaching and he had a lot of trouble over that. But he established his church. And still it was a church state. And still it was, it was a religion by force. But he did believe one thing different that Martin Luther didn't. The Catholic Church teaches transubstantiation, and when you take your first communion, if you don't believe that's the body and blood of Jesus, you cannot have any salvation. It's a vehicle of grace. Martin Luther believed in consubstantiation, that he's not literally there, but it is a vehicle of grace, and his presence is there. John Calvin, in the end, believed, he said, this is a memorial. It's a memorial dinner. We do it in memory of him. He's not there but we do this in memory of him. Having taken the cup, having given thanks, he said, you take this, and you divide it among yourselves. They drank. They took Elijah's cup and they drank from it. 22.18, Lego gar him men hote u me, pio apo tu nin apo tu genamatos, taste on blue. Eos hu Hey, Basilea, to Theo, Elthe, for to ye that know not I may drink from, from now on from the cup 
from the fruit of the vine, get them off this taste of unpleasant. Now, the fruit of the vine is grape juice, but it's also wine, oinos. Now, it does not say wine here, but this is what they were drinking, people. They were drinking wine. They were drinking Ganomatos Te Sam Plu, and when you have grape juice or whatever state of fermentation, they didn't have ice boxes, they didn't have refrigerators back then. So the wine began to form shortly after the grapes were pressed. The process of fermentation began. The fruit of the vine, the Ganomatos Te Sam Plu, he goes, who, hey, Bosalia, tooth, you out there? The fruit of the vine, until of which time the kingdom of God it may come. Now, Jesus will not take the Lord's Supper with his churches again. We remember him. Until he takes us up to be with him in the kingdom of God, when he brings his kingdom in. Kai Labon Artone. Eucharistesos, ek lasen kai edokin, autois, legon, tuto esten tu, soma, mu to hiper himan didomenon. And having taken the bread, Elijah's bread. Now, this word bread, it's, it is uh, to put, to fit together, is what it comes from, auto. To make a substance perfectly fit together. That's what this, they grind these, these grains of wheat and they mix it all together. That's what the word avron means. It means to fit together. And this bread is fitted together. Now this bread is not a loaf of bread like Weber's or uh, rainbow or whatever you have, rainbow, whatever kind of bread you have. First of all, it doesn't have any leaven in it. It's like a pancake or a tortilla. It is heated on one side on a hot container and then turned over and heated on the other side and cooked like a tortilla is cooked. This is like the pita bread. Now he takes this pita bread or this tortilla and he breaks it up. And having taken the bed, he hadn't given thanks. He broke it. And he gave to them, saying, This, it is the body of me, on behalf of you, being given. This matzah is always pierced, even today, the matzah bread in Israel and wherever the Jews have this Passover, it is pierced. It has pierce marks in it. It's got a little hole. Every one of the crackers that you see, how many of you had a, a saltine cracker today? How many of you had uh, uh, any kind of cracker today? A, a wheat cracker or anything? It had holes in it from this very time. Every one of those holes represent when Jesus was pierced. And this pierced bread represents our pierced Savior. 22 and verse, or 22, 19b. Tuto poiete es tain emain anatmenesin. This is the real reason for taking the Lord's Supper. It's not a vehicle of grace. It is not a uh, what sacrament. It is a memorial to remember what Jesus did for us. This you do because of my memorial. Do this in, in my memorial. Like Israel took the Passover to remember what God had done in Egypt, they were to remember what Jesus did on Calvary. That's it. He's not on Calvary. He's not on the cross, people. They got it wrong. That crucifix is wrong. That crucifix is empty. That cross is empty. It stood for something, but Jesus isn't on that cross. What Jesus said to in the bread, Baruch Ata Adonai Elohinu, Milake Ha Olam Hamatsi Lekem Men Haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God and ruler of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the earth. 
Now the cup of our redemption in Hebrew as he was speaking. This is what he spoke to these people because this was the Hebrew blessing now. They still do the Hebrew blessing on the bread today. Uh, away for many, many years they didn't know what it meant. Let's see what Jesus said about the wine. Baruch ata Adonai Elohinu Menaka ha'olam abori tri hagatim Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the Genomatus Taisan Plu, the fruit of the vine, the three Hagatha. 22 and verse 20. Kaito paterion hosatus merato de na se legon tuto to paterion. He kaine dietheke into hamati mu to heper himon ek he no menon. And the cup, in the same like manner after the to eat, same after they ate the bread, which represented his body, saying, this is the cup, the new covenant, the Hekine Adiatheke, not the old covenant, but the new covenant now. I have a new covenant with my church, and this new covenant with my by death, burial, and resurrection. New covenant in the blood of me, on behalf of you all, being shed. 22 verse 21. Plain Edo Heker to Paradotes may met him on epitase talk pace. And behold, the hand of the one betraying me is with me upon the table. Now he's going back to the Passover. Back to the Passover table. 22 verse 22. Hote hovios man to anthropu. Karato orisomenon poru ete. Plain uah to antropu ekeno di u paradidote. Now Judas was gone. Judas was a devil all of his life. He didn't get saved and then fall away from God. He followed God as a uh, hypocrite, as a bastard child, as all of these priests were. All bastard children of God. They weren't God's children. Because the Son, indeed, the Son, according to the having been determined beforehand, and continues on for itself, nevertheless, woe to the man, that one by the agency of whom he is betrayed. Twenty-two and verse twenty-three, and that's the end of this message. Kai atoi exon to six eighteen prosi atos to tis ara e ex auton ho to to melon prosain. Now they were worried, but that worry didn't last long. Let's look and see what they said. And they they began for themselves to debate face to face among themselves the one then it might be out of them that this thing is going to be about to do. This dastardly deed is about to take place. Let's go back now and let's read this from the Amplified Bible. 22 and verse 7 onward to 23. And the day of unleavened bread came on which the Passover lamb had to be slain. Exodus 20:12. Exodus 12, 18 through 22, and Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 8. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal, that we may eat it. And they said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? And he said, Behold, when you come, go into the city of man, carrying an earthen jug or pitcher of water. An unusual event will meet you and follow him into the house which he enters. And say to the master of the house, the house master, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may lay up and take the Passover meal with my disciples, habitual learner. And he will show you a large room upstairs, finished and furnished, that is, with carpets and with couches properly spread, 
there to make your preparations. And they went and found it, as he had said to them, and they made ready for the Passover supper. And he said, And when the hour had come, Jesus reclined at the table, and the apostles with him. They laid up to the table. And he said to them, I have earnestly and intensely desired to eat the Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall eat it no more until it is finished, fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Every Passover lamb that's been killed since then is blasphemy to God. Jesus is that lamb. If Israel ever institutes this Passover again, it will be blasphemy to the God of heaven. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it and distribute it among yourselves. For I say to you, from now on I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, like a tortilla, or pita bread, and he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Not as a sacrament, not as a vehicle of grace, not putting Jesus on the cross again and turning him into bread and wine, but remembering him. And in like manner, he took the cup after, after supper, saying, This cup is a New Testament of covenant ratified in my blood, which is shed and poured out for you. Lo, the hand to whom is on now engaged in betraying me is with me on the table. Psalm 41 and verse 9. That's where that prophecy came from. It was on the table with him. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined and appointed, but woe to that man to whom he has been betrayed and delivered up. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was who was about to betray him. Psalm 41 and verse 9 again. We all have betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ in some way. In some way. I listened to a great preacher the other day talk, talk about his life. He said he had started to the seminary and he was just doing terrible in Greek. And finally the, the professor in his second year told him to drop out of Greek. Because he just wasn't doing it. Failing. F, 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 F. He got on a conviction by the Spirit of God and realized that he was absolutely betraying his Lord and betraying his Savior and not doing his best in what he was going to do. He's going to be a preacher, going to be a professor, and he was being a, a, a slob, lazy. And the Lord put it on his heart and he asked that teacher to let him stay in that class and the next grades he got were not F's, but the highest grade in the class. Because the conviction of the Holy Spirit was on him. He had surrendered his heart to Jesus, but not his mind. Sometimes we can surrender our mind to Jesus, not our heart. They both must be surrendered to Jesus. Have we betrayed him this week? Have you betrayed the Lord? Have we betrayed our walk? Have we betrayed who we are and what we are? Have we? Our Lord and Savior will forgive us. We are not without chastisement when we do, because we are sons. Our Heavenly Father, we send this message out to your children, and maybe to those that are even lost and might hear it. I pray that you convict the lost of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come, and convict those that are your children. to ask forgiveness, and to walk in your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. For thy honor, fly thy glory, for your sake, and please forgive me where I fail you. Amen.